So when I was um, proposing a session on training, um, they originally were going to give me an hour and a half. And I was like overwhelmed, like, oh, I don't think I can fill an hour and a half. And then when I did a brain dump and put my thoughts into a slide deck, somebody looked at those slides and said, you're going to be able to say all that in an hour? <laughs> so we'll see how I do. Um, welcome to my session about how to get the most out of your uh, training for your, your users. Um, as John said, I'm the city of Longmont's web administrator. Um, I love my job. How many people do training right now? You're responsible for your training in your areas. Oh, there's a good, good amount of you. How many hours do you do your initial training? Is it more than four hours of training? When you're at asking your CMS users, you're getting them into a room and you're doing training for them for your content management system or your current system, whatever it is, to, to give them access to your website. How, ma how many hours of training do you provide? Two? Two? Four? Anybody do more than four? <laughs> so it depends on the need. Okay. Interesting. What I'm going to show you is a lot of training that I think as a foundation your users need to, to, to know in order to really give them the foundation to use your content management system to its fullest extent. Um, many of you know for the city, we actually um, didn't use Vision Internet up until recently. I was hand coding our sites. Um, the last time I had redesigned our website, it was back in 2002. And I put it into Dreamweaver and I was using Contribute kind of as a quasi content editing system. And the code that I threw up there in 2002 actually managed to keep working all the way through 2014 when we went with Vision Internet. We made some template changes along the way. I have about 50 users in that contribute system. Uh, when the very first website that I created for the city was designed in Microsoft front page and I was immediately out of the gate forced to train users. So what I'm getting at is I've been doing training at the city with a variety of tools and this same program I have done from the start, 1998. The only thing that keeps changing is the tool that we use and that inevitably will continue to change um, depending on how you manage your content. So why do organized training? Again, like I said, if you don't provide something, they're going to hate it and they won't use it. And what will happen is you will have to do their job and we can't take on any more work. There are some solitary individuals that I've spoken to that say I'm only a one-man shop and I approve all the content. So no one has publishing rights but me. And that's great, but as you level up and as you begin to um, work within your organization on many other projects, maybe you're not part of the IT department, maybe you're coming out of public information out of your city manager's office or some other county agency, inevitably you can't do it all. There's going to be a point in time where that realization will hit and you have to let those in editors do their job. It's very helpful when you have trained them and they are doing what you ask and you're acknowledged like I was last night and I can bring home um, that recognition from um, the members here saying that your website um, really looks good and operates well and that in part I'm going to say is because of the training that I provide. So well, this is what I think we hope the editors are going to do. 
they're going to spend 50% writing awesome content, 20% they're going to be working on their ADA compliance, their SEO, their broken links, analysis, they're going to work 15% on their news and events, 10% on videos and photo galleries, and then 5% work on getting rid of that old content. Here's where I think most of our content editors are. 60% news and events, 25% videos, 10% re remove outdated content, and 5% other. There's a lot of gaps there. So you're going to have to fill in those gaps either with tools like um, Site Improve or um, you know, internal content management tools that might run reports for you to see when uh, content is outdated. Um, you might want to set anniversary dates or reminders so that your content can be revisited. So there are ways to help you with that. Other obvious reasons for training. You want to train for consistency. Develop those specific skills in your users. Again, rem remembering that the majority of your users are not in IT. They don't live our world. And they have just a, a fingertip of, of knowledge or interest, maybe even in the web. You want to go over and review your policies, your procedures, establish your content guidelines, review your style guide, and hopefully you're going to reduce their frustrations because you've got individuals, at least I know in my organization, who are often your front um, desk administrators, um, clerks, uh, people who are dealing with the public on a daily day basis and then somebody will come and whisper something that they need to update something on the web and they have to change gears and then they have to figure out uh, where's the login and where's my username and password that I use to log into the system and how do I do that again because they don't do it on a regular basis. The non-obvious reasons for training, these are just some of the things I thought about and came up with. You want to discuss usability. You want to talk about accessibility. You want to promote transparency in your organization. You want to demystify the web. You want to break it down so it's not this big, scary uh, piece of software and the fact that you may have hundreds of thousands of people visiting your site on a monthly basis. You want to empower your editors. You want to give them a little bit of your assurance that things are going to go right. That that tool that they're going to be working with, um, you can either roll them back or step them back. That there's a way to let them archive their content so that they can, you know, if they make a mistake, there's a way to pull that back for them. Um, you want to promote the ease of the tool that you're using. And you want to share other resources that are available to them. You want to share that, you know, there's organizations like um, what we have here that you could um, sign up for webinars and gain additional con um, knowledge and training. Uh, use lynda.com. We use that a lot in our city. We've got 40 licenses that I um, loan out and, and uh, assign and deactivate their licenses to staff as needed. It's a great resource. So when you look at um, your user level, either you've got people who hardly ever use a site or you've got individuals um, that are always in there. And so there's a very defined um, difference between those two types of staff and I'm sure you all can um, appreciate that, that you've either got somebody who's completely scared of it and their primary job is to work on other things and when they go into the system they get frustrated because they don't know how to use it and then you've got your star players and they want to insert JavaScript into all your pages. <laughs> so those are the ones as well that you need to regulate and oversee. I'm sure we all have those horror stories. <sighs> Sigh. I could think of one um, in particular uh, recently that has um, happened for me. Um, I've been doing web design now for 18 years just for the city of Longmont and then tack on a few years outside of that. And now you've got people that are coming out of college they're in their 20s, they're in their 30s, and 
they're given a lot more training than we ever were. I used to go to user groups in the, the mid 90s just to learn what was this HTML thing and how you optimize an image. Thank God for Linda Weinman and you know understanding graphics for the web because um, her uh, training and her books uh, was the basis for my beginning understanding of how to migrate from a graphic designer into um, working on the web and now it's expanded to video and um, you know all sorts of other things but one horror story real quick was we um, have these new titles. Maybe you guys can appreciate this as well. Uh, people are being hired as the media specialist or the social media specialist for your area. How many of you have something like that where they're more just a public information officer but that's not their title, it's more specialist? And they come in with this knowledge that they, they know social media, they know the web, they've never built a website on their own because why? They've got WordPress and Facebook and that's the web. So I was not doing training on a regular basis and one woman um, was hired as this media social uh, uh, specialist, social media specialist. and. Um, I wasn't going to be doing training for a while, but she needed access. And she told me that she had enough understanding of the web that I wasn't, I didn't have to give her my two day training. And so I said, okay. And at the time, we were still using Contribute. So I was still doing my two day training, except insert Contribute training. And I said, okay. I would give her the benefit of the doubt, and we would try this new uh, non training method. And it has come to bite me in the butt several times. And it's things that you don't realize how much content you're sharing in that two-day training that when they go off and they use Google Docs to create their own online web forms, when in your training you say, I'm the only one that creates your web form, and as you're perusing your website, you realize that she's got three comment forms out there that you have no access to. So when you get those FOIA requests for open records, you have no way to get into that account because you don't know, did she create that Gmail account with a city email or was that with her personal email and where's the content going and who's getting copies of this? And so those are the scary things that not having a standard foundation of training will address. Gratuitous cat photo. Okay. So you don't want to be unhappy, you don't want your users to be unhappy. You want to provide that training so that they can learn some of this knowledge. Um, there's many different ways to do this um, and I'm being forced constantly to provide more and more training at the city and struggling with do I do it in person or do I do it as a safe pace, self-paced tutorial? Um, do I build those um, you know, using Captivate and you're moving the mouse around as you're discussing how to do something on your website. Is that the best way to do it? And I have to keep going back to my gut. And my gut says, if I can look you in the eye and I can see your facial expression and I can get those head nods from you, I'm gonna know that I'm getting through, that I have reached your level of understanding. If you give me one of those looks like, hmm, or you're playing on your phone or what have you and you're not paying attention, I can ask you a question. I can, you know, pull you out of the crowd. And I can figure out where you're at. When I give you the assignment to build these two little mini websites that I'm going to show you, and you don't accomplish that, when you go back to your office, you're not going to get an account like you had hoped. So there's you know, actual feedback from you that I'm receiving right then and there. So people say, well, you could do a, a Q&A, you could do a survey and question them on what you've shared in the videos. You know, if they did self-pace. I said, that doesn't help because they could just rewind, find the answer and fill out the survey. That doesn't prove that you have an understanding of what I just expressed and you can reproduce a little mini website 
right then and there. I can also, in that instance, as you're building those several pages, figure out if you're going to be the one that's going to add the cat photo to your page because it's cute, um, or are you going to left justify the things that uh, should be on your page in the manner in which we shared? Are you going to use the headings, or are you the one that's going to highlight something and bump it up to the 35, you know, um, size font and bold it and then turn it red? Yes. <laughs> so those are the things that I can tell when I'm looking at you during the class. So I'm here today because no two content web systems are the same, but if you want to see how I do it and you're using vision, then you're in luck because I'm going to share, share with you my training materials and you can take them back and insert your CMS training in here. At least you'll have some kind of uh, framework to work from. So the information that I provide, um, they, a lot of it can be read later at their own pace. I will talk for the first day about a variety of topics so my screens are text heavy there's a lot of information that I wanted to share with you I'm not going to read everything in order to accomplish my hour um, but your content should be relevant to your specific website obviously so you're gonna have to edit my stuff if you don't have items already um, it needs to be written for their technical level you can provide links to other resources. Now that we've just launched our intranet, my hope is that I can provide a lot of information that used to go out in paper and build those uh, into actual uh, content on, on a support page for our editors. It's going to be time consuming, but if you spend the time up front, you're going to have material that you can use for years to come. Because the basics of what we do in our jobs, it hasn't changed. Some of the things that I'm going to share with you as links for PDFs that you can download are from things that I've collected over the web since early 2000. And I still share it. And I say I can share it because the basis of web design has not changed in this many years. The concepts are still the same. And your training should reflect, obviously, the goals and policies of your organization. We all have slightly different tweaks on how we want to, you know, rock and roll and get stuff done. So you'll, you're going to need to put, insert your content there. Um, I do provide a history that people can understand where we are, you know, how did we get to, to where we are today and where did we come from? Um, a lot of your uh, millennials and, and other employees that you're hiring right now, um, they, they were born and the internet was there already, you know, a lot of them. So, you know, they're not necessarily going to want to hear the history, but, you know, if you can understand, let, at least express how, you know, content hits a web server and things like that, um, and what the languages are, then you can give them that foundation that maybe they've never, ever gotten from anyone. I also give them a, a tour of our actual public website. It is amazing to me that no matter when I do this training and what version of our website we are running, is that a lot of our own city staff hardly ever use our own city website. And so now they're being welcomed into this family that I call the web committee. And my job is to inform them of what they're now going to be a part of. And part of that is all of our various online services to get the word out. We've got other websites that you know, you, we link to that aren't part of our website. We talk about all the different components and tools. And when they leave that training, I get a lot of kudos. I get a lot of thanks just because I've given them such a, a broad overview of training about the organization and what they're a part of and how we get our content out to our constituents. And we need to teach content editing and writing as well, not just how to use the CMS. Um, another person that I shared uh, some of my ideas for my slides said, gosh, um, you could do an hour talk 
on just one of the numerous topics here that you're sharing. And that's what we've all come to realize is that um, in all of our days here as we participate in these kind of conferences or we've taken online training, to be good at your job, you need to know a lot about a variety of topics. There are sessions here where they talked for an hour or more just on Section 508. How can you express that body of knowledge to your users? It's kind of hard, so you've got to just hit the high points. So some of the other things I cover, uh, promoting your site, search engine optimization, social media, Google Analytics, writing, telling a story, making it accessible, marketing your message through other methods, understanding images, optimization, resolution, managing video files. How do we do that? Where do, they, where do you put them? How do you get them on YouTube? How do you get them on the website? Education is beneficial. Even if they only get one-tenth of what you're trying to share in that two-day time, they're going to walk away with more knowledge than probably they've learned elsewhere within the realm of their web design um, education. So it's really important that um, you give them opportunities to get that information, whether it's you speaking for several hours in a day or asking them to go out to lynda.com and take some classes. That could be part of your uh, course requirements. Um, if you've got lynda.com, it's a great resource to send people to, and you can tell whether or not they've watched it um, because of the fact that those reporting tools that Linda provides does, does do that. So I, I talk about the basics of web design. I've got a tip for uh, a tips page for successful websites. Again, this is some material that I have uh, collected um, over the last several years. It's a PDF, and it just goes over the basics that we all are um, ingrained in our knowledge and learning and probably could spew out if we had the chance. But I like to give them something that they can take back and refer to. Um, Jacob Nielsen's usability. So this is one of the ones that if you go to this website, 10 Good Deeds in Web Design, I think it dates back to 1997 or 1998. Why? Because the basics of good web design has not changed in all these years. So he's not going to update his, his site because it's still relevant. Um, I also came up with a quick list, which is just a single page kind of like a, you know, a, uh, you're, at the, you're in your cockpit and the pilots are doing that checklist before they're going to take off with your flight. I do the same kind of thing except for adding content to the website, things that people should um, be reminded that are important. Do you have a good title? Um, are all your links working? Did you add those metadata, uh, meta tags, the description and the keywords to the pages? All those reminders for them. I go through web policies that we have for the city, and we have a lot, just like I'm sure all of you do. We've got your linking policy, we have your accessibility policy, your style design guide. I have to explain now that we're a .gov. That puts us in a whole nother realm. That puts us in a realm where uh, you fall under having a federal top-level domain. You cannot do advertising on your website. And you have to have a splash page for every link when you send a, your customer to an external site and they're taking you from your .gov somewhere else. Talk about our privacy policy. I talk about copyright. This leads then into if you ever go out and you're part of the recreation services uh, department and you're running a program, make sure that you have uh, the forms for photos, photo waivers. If you're at an event, we've got a huge event that draws thousands of people every year. It's Rhythm on the River. And uh, one of our recreation services team members might go out and take pictures during the event to post on social media and what have you. And I often say, make sure that you are showing that image 
to the parents if you're if you you know you've just taken a photo of their child and if they say no uh, I don't want my child on the city's website you delete it right then and there so that people understand you can't just even though we are the city this is a public event and usually people in the public are free game um, we do try to make sure that we let whoever we're photographing know um, could you sign this form could you give us permission because if it's a great photo you might your child might end up on our front cover of a recreation brochure so copyright policy things like that ADA policies What's the number one disability? People are getting a little smarter with this. Um, in the beginning, nobody could answer that. Now they, they know it's color blindness. Talk about text, color, images, navigation, links, screen readers. With our new responsive template, it's even more important to understand this because <laughs> Uh, even to this day and after they've done my training, I'll land upon the site somewhere and I'll find two or three paragraphs that are bold and they've used um, like a heading one font because they know they need to use a heading one font instead of going, you know, 35 and bold and stuff. So they'll use the heading one font to get the look, but the whole paragraph will be a heading one font because they wanted to make it important on the page. So. Somehow I still miss the mark, even with, you know, all the training I provide. But we move on. Insert cute cat photo number two. 50 ways to deliver your message. We have a lot of ways to deliver our message. So our public information officer created um, just a two-page flyout and it is a great tool for your web editors to know all the different ways to market their message. Why? Because all of a sudden that content editor in your area has become a mini PIO for their area. As soon as their boss sends them to your training, they're often asked how to get that message out to the greater you know, web, out to the newspapers, out to social media. So if you provide that information during your training and let them know what are the ways that your site already can do this very quickly and easily. So in our case, I've set up some automated uh, features whereby when a news item is created, it is being uh, generated through an RSS feed. We've got an RSS feed that is created on the fly with all of our news. And then I grab that RSS feed and with Deliver It, uh, another website, I automatically take that RSS feed and I push it out to our main three city accounts, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And so they're like thrilled. They're like, really? All I have to do is create a news item and then it goes out to social media? It's like I've made their week. So let them know what systems you have in place so that they can do their job better. Um, those are just a few of the things that we're doing for the city. I've got probably 13 Facebook pages and uh, two Flickr sites and several Google Plus pages and I don't know, seven Twitter accounts and one YouTube and one Vimeo and several Instagram and I'm sure you're the same. I talk about who can have access and how we manage our social media. Because whoever is that web content person is probably gonna also be the person that's gonna help you with getting that message out to their social media accounts. I really don't like to give somebody access to social media if they don't have access to our website. Why? Because there's that disconnect then. You don't have somebody that could post something first on your city's website or your county's website and then copy that information and push it out to Facebook. So what you end up having is somebody who has access to publish on your social media and that's where they're posting all their content and nothing gets back or updated to the city's website and so you, you, you miss that marketing circle, right? The purpose of social media is to get them back to your website, not to just live in Facebook. Other tools that we use are Hootsuite, Sprout Social, and Archive Social. I also share that they can add more like buttons through our Vision Internet system, um, specifically on a particular page. In general, we don't put 
specific buttons on. We just have that um, share uh, option, but you can specifically add buttons, and so I talk about that as well. File formats. When I do my web design training, I don't get into how to manage video or what tools to edit. I also don't have time to, to sh talk to them about Photoshop Elements. Photoshop Elements is what we use in the city. I do a separate training for that. The reason being is I need to talk about resolution, file size, um, screen resolution, print resolution. I need to share with them that one image this big from your camera, even though you can go is not a good thing. So um, I talk about just the concepts and then I encourage them to attend my training uh, on Photoshop that I provide. Uh, working with video files, again, we've got a YouTube account, it's a government YouTube account for the city's main uh, files. I just created a Vimeo account and I have pri uh, added private settings so that we can use those um, on our intranet. I talk about social media sites um, and th that putting video on Facebook right now is very popular, but you want to keep the size of that video file short, like six, ten seconds, just to get their interest. So anything longer should really be a well-produced video. Um, how many are familiar with Animoto? Do you guys use Animoto? So just a handful. I often have people that will throw photos into an Animoto and then add their music, their canned music, and um, so that is one of the ways that they like to do something quickly to promote an event that's coming up, and that's been, that's been helpful. But again, I just had a staff person just create it instead of a city account, created it with their own personal account, so when it comes time for me to go get that video, I have to log in as them. Uh, personally and download it and if you don't get the right account and you just use free you can't um, often grab that video um, that's the purpose of Animoto they want you to pay to be able to download in the file format that you need so we have the city's internet and intranet and we're using the same CMS and I like that um, train them once and they can use the same system. People who are in HR, they may have limited you know, content that they put out on the internet site, but on the intranet, it's everything about HR, right? You have to know the policies, you have to know what benefits you as an employee have. So um, their roles and permissions are going to be different, but at least it's the same site. Um, when I talk about archiving content, there are ways to do this, and in your CMS you need to figure out which way you're going to promote. There is a way for us to do it through our Vision Internet system by merely saving and archiving. The downside is that when you save an archive and the page has images and links and that stuff and you've got several of those versions you can I think you can save up to five different archives in our system when that becomes antiquated and you need to remove those uh, PDFs from your doc central and you need to remove the images you have to do that with those archived versions because you can't just delete a page with those resources on that page because if the page ends up in your trash can and you are still connected to those elements in your library you can't go into the library and delete them you have to go back in to that archived page and you have to gut the page and resave it in order to release those resources from your library and so again the importance of training is to let them know what those gotchas are and um, the other way to archive is, of course, just grab that HTML and put it in a notepad file or PDF the page. So I go through all those kind of scenarios. How are my users going to manage their content? What's the best way? I was their backup. When it was a static site and everybody was using contribute, what I would do is I would just go and pull the site down to my local computer and then 
all those raw HTML files and docs and images would be stored on my system. Contribute also allowed you to have any number of archived pages that you could step back to and they liked that. So now going to this new system with Vision Internet, it's the onus is on you. The onus is on you to figure out if I'm going to completely gut this page and redo it or, I'm, or my manager has asked me to reformat this page, you might want to make a copy in the archive of it before you make those changes. Somehow save it because if you accidentally delete it and you publish it, there's nothing I can do to help you. So for some people that's like I just put a stake in their heart. <laughs> so you need to let them know what those gotchas are. Another tool we use is Archive Social for our social media. That helps me with open records requests. If no one else is understanding that you as a web person are probably the one that the city manager is going to call when there's an issue. Put that up, take that down. So I explained to them the reason you're getting train, training from me is because the city manager is not going to hunt you down. They don't know that you edit the parks page. They don't know that you manage the uh, transportation page. They do know my name, so I'm the one that gets the call. So it's important that I know where our records are and I have access to them for transparency, for open records. And that gets back to where are your forms stored, what's your process. Google Analytics. They may never have even dreamed that some of these systems are out there. Once you show them that there is a tool that lets you see how your users are interacting with your content, that opens up their eyes and that makes them part of the conversation that, you know, your goal is to write content that your users can find and how do you know if they're hitting the mark? There's reports here that you can run. We own a Google search appliance which is running the search feature for our city's main website. I go into that system and I, I explain, I run searches. I said, after you create or modify your content, you should go back to our city's public front end and pretend you're a customer. Now see if you can find your content. I also, with our own Google search appliance, tell them, I can help you if you ever have content that is just getting pushed down for some reason, it's not coming up very well. Because I can customize it through keyword matches so one example I give them is that when you hit the city's website, we don't have our city's municipal code stored within our .gov site. You have to go to Municode online. You have to go to the website that we're paying a third-party vendor to host. So you have to go there. So what happens if somebody comes to your website and they, they type um, loud noise? So they're looking for your loud noise ordinance. What happens when they do that on your website? Do they get a result? Have you tried that? So I actually do that in front of them and I indicate that I have taken the time to run search reports that shows me when someone has put in a phrase or a keyword in our search and the results were nothing. So I can look at those reports where there was no search result found and I could put those keyword matches in there and I could send them to the appropriate website, almost like an ad like Google does up at the top, but it's highlighted and it's called a keyword match. So when you come to the city's website and you search for words like loud noise that might be in our city ordinance, it would say, you know, our, the top hit is our city of Longmont municipal code online. So those are the things I explain. Crazy Egg, how many use that? Crazy Egg? Great tool. Does heat maps, all sorts of things. Great clickable analytics. Um, you do have to think ahead, so if you're going with a product like Vision, you want to make sure that during the design phase that you get that uh, JavaScript added to your template so it's on all of your pages. Um, so I go into Crazy Egg and I show them how I can track their home page and if they're looking to redesign content I can tell them where their users are clicking. I can tell them how they're finding it. I can tell them what is the sweet spot on their page. What is the size of their um, 
their window that they have, you know, so we're all taught to put the important content above the fold, but where is that now? Where is that on a, a smartphone? How many users are coming to you with a certain size viewport? You can tell that with that product really easily. It's a great product. Sight Improve, great product again. We use it and have been using it for years. It's a nightly scan and it sends out a report to those people that you add into the system. So it's kind of a hands-off thing. And um, it also helps search your site for certain types of content types. So you can put in uh, a search for credit card numbers. God forbid somebody put out you know, the wrong PDF out to your document central and now it's got a bunch of content regarding your customers and it's, it shouldn't be there. Social security numbers is another thing you could look for, things like that. So how were we trained by Vision Internet? You get a four hour session. You get a four hour session, it's rapid fire, they have an agenda they have to go through and they have to hit all those topics. We overfilled every single room uh, session. We had two, day, two days of four hour sessions. So we had three for general editors and we had one four hour session for those of us who were gonna be the super uh, users. There were no rooms, room really for questions. Um, when you look at the agenda, it is pages and pages of what they need to step you through and it's a lot. Uh, no room for policy de decisions. You just went from a system that you as the web person could do a lot of editing and customizations and things and now you're in a content management system and some days I feel like they put me in a straitjacket and they hobbled me. So now we're doing it this new way and you can't tell your users during that training session why. So you kind of have to roll those policy changes out afterward. Um, and just a lack of sufficient time to, to have hands-on. People can't learn um, this new system in that way. So what did I do? I recorded the session. We hired a videographer, similar to what we have here in the room, to sit there and we mic'd the, tra the, uh, the trainer who came from Vision. And we recorded one editor training and then we recorded one super user training and when I went to go create my material, I literally took their agenda, and this is kind of what the, the agenda was. You can see all those items that they cover. I went back through and I looked at the video and watched those four hour sessions and almost verbatim typed out my new, my new user guide because I wanted to express training moving forward in the same way with the same precision that they had done it for us the first time. Because I believe in consistency to that level. So we talked about the overview of what the system is. So all of the first day of my two day training um, the first time I did this right after we had launched and went live with our CMS, I thought I could do this training the way I always have and I had, you know, two by four whoop, right between the eyes. So I'm going by my first day talking about all that stuff that I've spoken to you about early on, ADA, images, just the history of the web, everything, took all day. Came in the second day and I thought I could get through the overview in the morning, just like the vision trainer did. And then the afternoon would be my session where I set them loose and I have them build two little mini websites. It took me six hours to get through the agenda from vision. And it left me with about an hour and a half then to give them that opportunity to build their own pages. And the feedback that I got that I usually, you know, I ask for feedback from all my trainings. They said, we need more hands-on time. That was not enough. And I agreed. So I just did my two-day training because we launched our new intranet uh, last week before I came here on Tuesday. So out the door went the intranet and the next two days I had, 
new editor training and I changed it up. I decided to start my overview process of letting them get their hands into the CMS and to follow along as I toured. You know, click on this, this is how you edit your dashboard. Click on this, this is how you upload an image. Click on that. So I started that, that first day in the afternoon so that when I came back the next day, we just finished up the tour and then spent the rest of the afternoon on building those little mini websites. And um, some people were speedy, you know, those millennials. Several of them were done, they were way ahead of me. And uh, all I had to do was review their work and they were out the door. And I tell them, the minute you have all this done, you can leave. And so that's another thing that is kind of a, a motivating factor is you wanna get out of the training you know, sooner, um, you know, get your pages all created. But it, it really is nice because you can tell right away who are your speedy ones that get it, get the concepts, they know how to manipulate the image, they know how to put the border around, you know, the padding and everything. They know how to create the link and the links work. So just because there's a link there doesn't mean it works. So I put, I share their screen, I visit their pages and I put it on the big screen and I start clicking around. And so there you are, your teacher's reviewing your work and you know, we talk about it. If somebody's centered everything, I'm sure you have those users, they love to center content. It's like, I can appreciate your creativity, but that's not how we do it. Could you please fix that and, and left justify your work? So I send it back. And I tell them, when, when you get back to your desk, you will have a new account. I will create it, I'll send you an email. But for the first couple of months when you're in the system, you will not have publishing rights because that is an opportunity for you and I to have a dialogue. That's an opportunity for you and I to see how well you grasp the concepts and that you understand what you're doing. And when I see that you do understand things and your links continue to work and I don't have issues, um, then you will get publishing rights. Because I know that once I've given you publishing rights, it's a little hard to take them back. So I asked them to create a few uh, little mini websites. Um, here's some other tips. Have an extra knowledgeable person in the room when you're doing training because when you've got 10, 15 brand new editors and you ask them to do a task and they can't do it, um, it will slow your class up if you have to go around individually to everybody. So invite some of your other people that you've trained in the past to join you because it's an opportunity for them to get a refresher. Um, try to provide the website overview the day before the training so that they have something to play with on the first day. That was what I said, I, that was a gotcha. Um, I didn't give them enough time. And student, students appreciate the hands-on uh, time to build their own mini websites because there's a lot of content on your site and they may not have to build a brand new page and insert it into the navigation somewhere for weeks or months after they've had training. Why? Because your content doesn't really demand that new, new pages be built. So if you give them that opportunity to build new pages and link them all together, that first you know, opportunity, that kind of sets them at ease. They know how easy it is. Um, if you don't have an intranet site that is the same um, CMS that you're training on, talk to your vendor and see if they'll let you play on the development site. That's what we did with Vision and they were kind enough um, because I didn't have the, intra the new intranet up but I needed to do training after the public site went up and um, I didn't want them playing on the public site. I wasn't that familiar with permissions Sorry about that. I'm not that familiar with p permissions early on to be able to hide the content um, like I could have. Now I understand the system much better and I can hide it. But if you're in that same position, you might want to see if there's a playground somewhere that's hidden like a development server. Handouts, handouts, handouts. I know we have a lot on our plate and you just don't want to sit and type out your user guide, your step-by-step -step user guide, but it's invaluable. People love that. Why? It reduces questions. You can hand that, you know, 
32 double-sided page document to them printed out in color and it can answer a lot of questions that you have to do over the phone or you have to remote to their computer and show them how. Photoshop elements training, again I do that separately and I also do social media training so you don't get to play on our social media sites until you have my training and that's a two-hour training right now just so I can go over the basics, the legality of it um, and so I keep that all separate. <laughs> Questions and answers. Yes. Um, you mentioned uh, the training. Do you provide follow-up training as well as the initial training? I do. So um, everybody who gets trained gets added to what's called a, just a group email in our Outlook account, and it's the web committee. And so anybody who's had training gets added to the web committee list and anytime I'm doing any training I send out an email to that group and offer people to attend either both days as a refresher or just the you know part where I'm doing the hands-on with with the CMS so yes uh, also I have a couple more questions. Um, how did you choose the staff members from the different divisions or departments to uh, manage the content? I don't. I don't choose. Um, my requirements um, are a willing to learn and when I send out my email I say you have to have your manager's approval to take this on because it's, it's a two-day training and you will be expected to be the content manager for a certain area of content. And so you just need to make sure that your manager's on board. And what ends up happening is you're always going to have some leads in areas like, you know, my, my uh, marketing uh, specialists, or you're going to have those public information people. And those are probably, those people will know who their content creators are that want to have access to your, to your site to keep it up. Um, it is expanding because a lot of our current web editors don't have enough time to keep the content up and so what ends up happening is the person who wants their stuff to be more current and fresh they end up taking the training themselves and I've even had managers take my training and that flatters me um, they do it for two reasons one they want to understand what their uh, employees are required to know to do this web stuff and two um, they wanted to know all the policies that I keep espousing but they get it in like one-liners because they will come to me and say well we want to put an ad here because they're a sponsor for you know rhythm on the river or whatever and what are our parameters about advertising I'll say well because we're a .gov we have to do this that and the other thing and they're like well you know why is that and so when they take my training they understand how the web works and social media and how it's all tied in and 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 that's been very helpful so I've actually had managers who the sheer uh, purpose of them attending is just for their own knowledge. And last thing in regard to policy procedures um, or was it necessary to have your city manager give his final staff approval? Does he, is he the heavy, uh, or did your governing body want to review those policy procedures? Um, so we have, the question is in regards to policies and who's the final approver of that. And we've, we've got several policies that have been created. Um, and, and I have, um, that link right there for you is where my handouts will be. Uh, it's live right now if you would like to go out there and download some of my training material. Um, so to answer your question, we've got a steering committee and we have a public information team and I just created a social media team. And of course you've got your directors. Um, so it could be any number one of those groups depending on what kind of policy we're building, uh, whether it's a linking policy or a social media policy, it'll go to the appropriate group for that approval. And of course run it by the city manager's office as well. Um, my director, I'm RIT, 
is under an internal area called shared services and so our assistant city manager we have two assistant city managers and one assistant city managers in charge of internal uh, services so that's our shared services group and then the other ones in charge of external services and so um, I do have I consider that we do have the ear of the city manager by working with um, our director you're welcome uh, there was one over here yes Good question. So she's asking about where do I store all our images so that they're consistent and sized properly and can be shared. Um, we struggled with that. Um, so when we r went with Vision Internet, they have this um, library, uh, a, a, a file resource repository, whatever. And so I wanted to make sure that I in initiated the structure. So at the very top, we've got clip art and stuff from iStock and other paid places. And then we've got department and divisional area for banners. So because we want to be consistent with our images, because if you're gonna put an image in an area that's either gonna be a slideshow or just a single banner, um, we want them in a certain area, not tucked away in your department or division folder so that anybody could share those. Then we've got all the department areas and um, they manage their own content and so we uh, on occasion just go through there and any content on that has been loaded to the CMS can be reused. We ask people just to make sure that they have signed you know photo waivers and that we trust that any image has that has been loaded into that image library that we can fall back and get that uh, media uh, you know somewhere if we needed to for legal purposes on the intranet um, we are loading an area under the image library for all the different logos that the city has so we've got um, our seal we've got uh, you belong in longmont logos then we have divisional department logos and uh, special event logos and those are all going to be uh, shared on the intranet using the same system and vision Yes. Nope. It's within the content management system. Okay. And then do you tag your images? There is a way for you to put an alternative uh, text, so it's your alt tag, and uh, you can put your description there. And if you do it correctly, anybody who uses that image has the description right there because as soon as you add it to your page, um, that alt tag that was added initially when the image went in gets carried over. And you can totally edit it if it's not what you um, expect it to be or want it to be. Yes. Yes. You know, I have wanted to do that. I know uh, Leslie from the city of Boulder has these lunch and learns. Um, I just have not had uh, the chance to do that. I have felt like I've been in a migration of some website for the last five years of my working career. Uh, so now that I've got the two major ones done, um, I do want to circle back. I'm a fan of doing go to meetings. So rather than getting everybody together, sometimes with the 60 plus people that I have as web committee members, it's hard to get those 60 people in a room, so I gave up. Because they're all at different levels, they're all at different um, areas across the city, and some of them are those front desk people that can't leave, they don't have a backup. But what I can do is I can do a go-to-meeting, and I can discuss new things and overviews. So when we were going through the internet redesign process, I would do these go-to-meeting uh, meetings for one hour, and I would just kind of do a project review, show people where we were at, get feedback, and then I would record it and put that video out on our intranet. So I would like to do more in person, um, but that um, kind of depends on my schedule moving forward. I think we've got time for one more, Susan. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. How often do you do refresher training? You mentioned refresher training. Do you have a particular schedule? 
No, my goal is to do it quarterly. Um, I keep telling my supervisors, um, more people is not good. Quality people is good. So I keep pushing back on them wanting me to train every person that has an interest. So um, I probably in the year 2016, I will be doing four, so one a quarter. Yes. Thanks. Um, I, the question is, where essentially do I work and what is my uh, purview of, of responsibility? I work in IT. Um, I originally started out in the city clerk's office. Um, so as far as communication goes, I feel like I have really established what our public communication program looks like. I am not in public information. I used to work under the public information officer until we did a strategic plan at some point in time. And the, they determined that you should not be there, you should be in IT, and they went, you are now in IT. And so, uh, but the public information officer and myself, we work closely together. Um, but when it comes to the web and that sort of thing, all the tools I use, um, I've gotten that from this group. And so my training is uh, in the technical side of things and to, I operate under a CYA. So I'm, I want to have something in place before something happens. And I've usually been pretty good. So when my public information officer and my assistant manager go to the public information um, conferences, they go to these sessions and they're like, oh, well, we're already doing that and we're already doing that. And so they come back and they say, we're good. So thank you. That's good. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Any much for your time. Offline. Thank you, Susan. <laughs>